Tronikov. Tronikov. Uh, he is a really great man because he uh, lived about 96 years. This is a, so this is an example of uh, a traditional Ukrainian village that was built during the Soviet Union despite what Moscow kind of wanted the image of Ukraine to be. This is Ukrainians as they reflect on their own history and it survived the Soviet Union and now uh, as our guide uh, Alexandra was saying um, in many ways Ukrainians look at these kind of buildings and reflect on how better it was to when they were independent and had their own culture as opposed to building you know big Soviet style apartment blocks and things like this. village was a village and when we see such houses we immediately think only about villages mm. but if we would search a little more we would see that this village tabri up to 19th century it was a city with Magdeburian right so they were of two types of uh, wooden type like this or the frame wood when we use the frame uh, and then we fill this frame with uh, some kind of branches and then we use clay on these branches from two sides to make the wall. So we're in this Ukrainian village learning the history of it and it's amazing how much the Ukrainian people invented things that the rest of the world uses, especially agriculturally, on farms. What an amazing place so far. Amazing, amazing. parents' house and how this looked in his native village. Is it, was, was it here and then, or was it somewhere else and moved? It was moved. Everything was moved From here. where? From uh, Shevchenko's village, uh, where he was born. And in the warmest corner of the house, we have the bed place for the parents. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, also, one third of the house was occupied by the stove. Uh, in pre-Christian times, a stove was uh, a place of, for the prayer. For the soldiers, they are making covering for helmets. Wow, that's great. Yeah. So she says we're doing she's doing this for the children, she's doing this for the soldiers, mm. she's doing this for the future, she's doing this for victory. Mm. This is just yeah. one grandmother. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so she'll make this frame mm -hmm. and then she'll mold it around a helmet for Wow. It's a beach ni soldati ili sniper ili kako je. A beach ni soldati. Yeah, for anybody. Uh, Volga Germans as well. She sent Volga Germans. They sent Germans yeah. to the Volga River Valley. Yeah, 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 yeah. She she sent Germans here. Yeah. Um, she populated this place with her people, yeah. with the Germans, and and that's why there's the, that's why when I talk about how. Ukraine is this mix of empires. It's because everybody has, pardon me, fucked with this country. But Ukraine, Ukraine has always been used by other empires. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So Catherine being a German, but a Russian, she's the Tsarina. She's taking over huge stretches of Europe as the Turks are withdrawing because the Turkish, uh, uh, the Ottoman, Ottoman Empire is falling apart. So Catherine just decides she's gonna take everything where the Ottomans are surrendering and, and pulling back. But then she's going to populate it, not with Russians and not supporting Ukrainians. She's going to bring Germans, bring Germans from her birthplace here and ethnically cleanse Ukraine and turn, turn it into something completely different. Never Ukrainians were trying to live all together as the Russians did. You're right. We were made to do it in 1921. So this was the part for uh, the father. father and mother. Of the bra uh, of the oh, husband. Yes, 
Yes, and that was the part for the young family. So yeah. why girl was making her chest? Yeah. That's so cute. Mother was telling that you can tell all the secrets to the doll, not to the real friend who can betray you. Five oxen. Uh, one day we are working in my field. And I Uh-huh. I can see it absolutely. How the hollow bread was made yeah, and uh, the traditional painted as yeah. uh, of that region. Yeah. This is the uh, stone which is uh, produced, which is uh, digged in that region, which is For the mine. Dogs and cats. Yeah. Uh, so these uh, 18th century. Pretty much work to do, but nevertheless. How many drones did you get? Oh wow! Oh wow! So oh, our ladies are working always, constantly at every step. <laughs> <laughs> In the free time, we are oh, working. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, the same thing. And <laughs> the king can just go here and look up. Oh wow. That's what I was talking to you about my favorite. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, look at that. It's a unique construction now uh, the traditional construction. So we we just left the village area. There might be some more, but we're in the wood line right now, just checking out this entire, what is now a museum of an old Ukrainian village and how it would be set up. Absolutely amazing. We had a TV series called in the south part and maybe in a half a year it would be restored so I'm with Phil now we're kind of off the rails of our guided tour uh -huh. and we're just we're just walking through some of the most beautiful parts of this museum Phil what's one of the most surprising things you've learned so far I think uh, it's not surprising to me but it's neat to see like all the different regions of Ukraine in one area because people forget how huge this country is. It was also interesting the equality between the man and the woman in yes. the relationship in that like women could work and this was like 1700s yeah. Europe and in Ukraine women had enough liberation that they were able to actually go and make money and, yeah. and all that kind of stuff. It, it was interesting to me to hear like even in the 1700s a woman could make a textile or you know, milk cows or something, and then sell that and get the money for herself. She didn't have to give it to her husband. Right. Wow.
Ukrajinský prase, nikurica. Got it. Vegetables, potato. So this is a spicy soup, soup from at the Bulgaria. Yeah? Uh, it's like near uh, um, Hungary. Yeah, is this yes. borac? Bor it's a spicy, like a kind of like a Hungarian goulash or mm -hmm. paprika. Mm -hmm. A little bit spicy with with like smoked paprika and uh, uh, pork and beef and chicken mm. and like rice and that's uh, just delicious that's the video i hope you guys enjoyed it that is the final one from my trip in september i came with a nafo convoy on the 22nd one but now i'm back here it's december so as you guys can see winter is here um, but this is the final one that I couldn't upload. My channel was gone for like a month. You guys know how it went. But if you enjoy the content of me getting on the ground here, editing videos together, putting together some higher quality content, please like the video, subscribe to the YouTube channel with your notifications turned on. Consider becoming a member of the channel to support my work. And I do daily live streams. You can tune in and we go through all the latest news on the internet. So tons of content coming, you guys especially from my trip here in Ukraine. It's winter time, it's cold, but we got a lot done, a lot of good work. Slava Ukraine, see you guys in the next one.